Hello everyone and welcome to the first bonus lecture in rapid revision of orthopedics by Dr. Pratik Joshi and this lecture is on postgraduate entrance study techniques. Now before I start on to the actual topic I would like to extend a huge thank you to all my friends who liked, shared and subscribed to this channel. It was two weeks ago that I started this channel for undergraduate training in orthopedics and in the course of two weeks we have crossed nearly 650 subscribers from all over the country and we are moving very rapidly towards our first 1000 subscribers. So thank you very much and keep the love coming and for those who have not subscribed or shared this channel please put it across to your friends and subscribe so that as and when I put up some new content it will be delivered directly to you. So moving on to today's topic that is postgraduate entrance preparation tips and tricks. Now the reason for taking this topic is firstly that it is April and May and uh, it's quite high time that uh, the postgraduate aspirants should start studying for the postgraduate entrance. Apart from that, because of the recent COVID-19 crisis, most of our study techniques, especially for those who uh, relied on studying in a group or studying in a library, they have taken a major hit and therefore what we require is an overhaul of the studying techniques and a look into some personalization options to make your strategy fit you as a person so that you can make the most of the kind of time and the kind of effort that you're going to put in. Now, as we all know, the postgraduate entrance pattern is a changing pattern. Earlier we had the state and the All India entrance, then there was the NEET and now we are looking at a NEXT or a National Exit Examination. Now, what we require is general studying techniques which means studying techniques designed not at a particular examination in specifics but generalized in order to help you make the most of your study material in order to make the most of your energy and in order to best utilize the kind of time that you will be putting in for postgraduate study techniques. So because of that we require a look into the general techniques of postgraduate study pattern. So having said that, let us start with the first concept of the day and that is called the pyramid of success. Now, while I was a postgraduate aspirant, I had divided some, some subjects into two categories. One is called the base subjects and one is called as the rank clinching subjects. Now let's take a look at them. Base subjects are basically the larger subjects in MBBS. For example, our final year major subjects, medicine, surgery, OBGY, pediatrics and also pathopharmac microbiology and TSN. Now what is common to all these subjects is that uh, while we are studying them, we study them extensively in detail and from standard textbooks. Also most of us now as per the trend, we are using at least one MCQ book or one coaching class set of notes in parallel to our subjects. So these are studied in detail and therefore the overall level of knowledge amongst PG aspirants is fairly good. The second thing which binds these subjects in common is that these subjects are covered in the PG entrance examinations in such a fashion that the questions are based on a conceptual understanding of the subject rather than small details and trivia. So because of that, for someone who has studied these subjects from a standard textbook, these conceptual questions are fairly attemptable. They may not be easy, but they are attemptable. The difference that this kind of a tactic creates is that when you analyze the score taken by someone in the top 100 ranks with someone in the top 10,000 ranks, what you will realize is that there is not much of a difference in the scores as far as these subjects are concerned. For example, uh, medicine or obsgyny or microbiology, there is not much of a score as uh, much of a difference as far as these scores are concerned and therefore the percentage loss of someone in the top 10,000 as compared to someone in the top 100 is fairly less. But if you remember the little red triangle on top, that was the rank clinching subjects. Now rank clinching subjects are anat physio biochemistry and short subjects of MBBS, which means forensic medicine, ENT ophthalmology, skin anesthesia, radio psychiatry and my own branch orthopedics. Now the problem with the approach for these subjects is that when we study these subjects in final MBBS or in their year of MBBS, we study them from the prof exam pattern, which means we would like to prepare short answer questions, long answer questions, we draw diagrams and we create flowcharts. But when we start studying them from a postgraduate entrance point of view, what we realize is that most of the questions are factual and detail oriented, which we have as students, we may have 
um, ignored while studying for the prof exam pattern. So what happens is that the percentage losses in these subjects are more which means a person who is in the top 10,000 will lose much more of his marks per short subject as compared to a person who is in the top 100. Also all these subjects are such that the number of subjects is more and the per subject quota of marks is less but when they all come together as rank clinching subjects we will realize that the bulk of the marks which are lost by a set of people who are in the top 10,000 are in these subjects and if these subjects can be mastered they will help you ascend the triangle of success and you will get your rank. So this is the place where toppers score much more than the others. Now the second concept for the day is the building of a basic knowledge bank which means that as and when you start studying you will have a lot of sources of information from where you can get MCQ worthy data. For example, there will be the notes of any coaching class which you have attended or this online coaching which you may be attending. Secondly, it could be your MCQ books which you have bought off the shelf and others, other sources. You have your internet, you have YouTube lectures, you have all these things. Now, what matters is that if you were to revise all these things in situ the way they are, there is not enough time to revise all these things together and you will end up losing out on this material and therefore what matters is to consolidate all these things into a basic knowledge bank and what I mean by a basic knowledge bank is an actual physical notebook. So may it be your class notes or may it be your MCQ notebook whichever it is the biggest notebook which you have which has the maximum data should have a couple of pages extra in which you would add the data which you get from other sources such as internet or such as YouTube and this is called building your basic knowledge bank. Now obviously this basic knowledge bank is subject wise and once you have built your basic knowledge bank you have to move on to conceptual and factual. Now moving on to conceptual and factual means that you have to build up your basic knowledge bank and then divide the data in your basic knowledge bank into conceptual versus factual. Now what exactly is conceptual and what exactly is factual? Now conceptual is basically your base subjects. So it is those where most of the questions are asked on a conceptual basis whereas factual are pieces of data which you need to memorize. For example be it um, scientists, be it most common causes, be it vectors from PSM, be it CD4 count in microbiology, these are all factual data. The reason why we have to divide this is because once you divide it here, you will decide how to divide your time amongst these subjects as in when you start studying. So this is called as an MCQ timeline. So starting here is today. This is where you are starting to study and all the way down this timeline here right at the bottom is the day of the exam. So this is the amount of time that you get and on the y-axis here we have the relative emphasis which means how much time and how much energy do you plan to devote as time goes by to conceptual and factual. Now closer to today or closer to the start of your preparation the vast majority of your time is best given to conceptual subjects and a very small amount should be devoted to factual. The reason is that early on in your preparation, conceptual subjects will be a little hard to grasp. It takes some time and it takes a lot of energy to build up these concepts. At the same time, if you spend a lot of time on this factual data, it's going to evaporate because most of the factual data is volatile. As you go down towards the exam, you will realize that Conceptual data takes less and less time as the concepts become stronger and stronger and the time which you save in uh, doing conceptual data can now be devoted to factual data. So as in when you go ahead in your preparation scheme, the time saved because the concepts are becoming strong can now be devoted to factual data and therefore your relative emphasis to factual data goes on increasing. Towards the end of your preparation, Conceptual data will be a very small portion of your studies because most of these concepts are now 
well fixed in your system and you don't have to revise them on a daily basis and factual will be the most of your studies because these things are volatile and they are best revised properly before the exam so that you can utilize this data before it evaporates so this is the mcq timeline this was something which i used in my pg entrance and it worked out quite well for me now topic based study is the future of postgraduate entrance examination meaning what that if you have a certain topic which has been covered in this year's exam as an mcq then it is likely that the topic itself will be repeated next year not the topic directly but maybe a different question with different options or something opposite to the topic or something related to the topic or something in physical proximity in the given textbook now let us take an example these are questions from the uh, maharashtra postgraduate entrance exam of 2016 and i draw your attention to this one question number 42 related to goal number 5 of millennium development goals now the answer to this was maternal health now if we were to do topic based study on this particular topic so topic based study for millennium developmental goal number 5 i would like to study what are the other mdg components which means if this is number 5 how many of them are there in total and what are they then if this mdg goal number 5 has some sort of subheadings i would like to study how many subheadings it has and what all are those subheadings third now since this mdg is related to maternal mortality i would like to study other maternal mortality related work such as maternal mortality indices causes of maternal mortality so on and so forth and the last is what is in physical proximity in the text now physical proximity means that in a standard textbook the uh, topic which is next to the topic in question is also a high yield topic it could be asked in the next year for example this is a representation of the page in the standard textbook where the millennium developmental goals are given now this is blurred out for copyright purposes but what i wanted to point out was the square in the bottom right corner that is the part about health care delivery that is the next topic in the standard textbook after millennium developmental goals so if you find in the recent years a question on a given topic it is a smart option to also study the topic before and the topic after it increases your probability of getting a question on a topic you have read now unfortunately the era of pure mcq centric preparation is now drawing to a close but mcq centric preparation is not completely outdated what we need to do is mcqs for subject practice if you are weak at a particular subject or for technique and time management and most importantly for keywords in a given mcq but again the question comes which mcq you should read and which not to read now if you open any standard textbook of mcqs what you will realize is that there are to be orthodox at least thousands of mcqs and there are mcqs from 1987 1988 1989 for reference my birth year is 1991 so the mcqs are very old and this is a trick which i used to use while preparing for the entrance and that is any mcq which is older than me is completely irrelevant and you can safely omit it now the corollary to the age rule is that if the mcq has been asked after your admission year to mbbs it is a relevant question and not only should you know the question but also you should know the entire topic from which it comes so this is your mcq timeline where anything before your birth year is irrelevant and anything after your mbbs admission year is completely relevant and it must be known moving on to the fourth concept of this lecture and that is a swot analysis now swot stands for strength weakness opportunity and th uh, threat now what we have to do is basically the point behind this swot analysis is that as you go on preparing you have a subjective feeling of being good at a particular subject or being not good at a particular subject so it is not sufficient to just have a subjective idea of where you stand because if you don't have an objective idea of where you stand it is impossible to act upon it and therefore this analysis will help you to act upon it now i draw your attention to the square in the slide the first one is strength now strength is a subject where you are confident about the subject and as per your test 
you are scoring accordingly. Now, a weakness is the exact opposite of the strength that is, you are not confident about the subject and you are not scoring in it either. Now, there are two extra categories. One is opportunity and one is threat. Now, in opportunity is a subject where you are not confident about the subject. However, so far you are scoring well. And a threat is a place where you are confident. You feel you know the subject, but you actually don't or the scores are not agreeing with you. Now, the reason behind dividing subjects like this is because we have to add into each of these squares the subjects which fit this description so maybe you have six subjects in your strength you have another four in weakness you have another three in opportunity and two in threat now it is possible to convert an opportunity into a threat if you were to revise properly and to gain some confidence however if the strength subject is ignored it is likely to slip into an opportunity or it is likely to slip into the threat. A threat where you have the confidence but you don't have the score at some point is going to slip into the weakness slot. Now SWOT analysis is not a one-time thing. It is something which you need to do every month and the aim is to push as many subjects into strength as possible and to keep as many subjects out of weakness and threat as possible. Moving on, a couple of extra tactics which I used to use. First one is the book of numbers. Now it is an actual physical book where there is a number written on top of each page. For example, this is number one. And as you can see, there is data. All this kind of data which is completely unrelated to each other but united by the number one. This is a part of this page. Similarly, I have a page for two and a page for three all the way till 100 and this notebook should be by your side every time you're studying and as in when you come across a particular number, you write it on that particular page. So you have something uh, which is 3.16, put it on the page under three. You have something for 6.55, put it under the page of six. By the end of your study, you have all your numerical values arranged numerically, which can be used as a factual data bank. Next is a graduated list. Now graduated list is important because not only does it help you identify numbers, for example, which infection, this particular list deals with which infection is happening at which CD4 count. Now the question may not always be straightforward. It may not always ask you uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis occurs at a CD4 count of around 300. It may give you a set of organisms and they may ask you to arrange those organisms from highest CD4 count to lowest CD4 count. In this case, a graduated list in an ascending or a descending order is going to help you out. Moving on, list of frequently asked topics. Now, as you can see, this is a list of the entire uh, communicable diseases chapter in PSM where I have put in all these vectors and the number of diseases which they are transmitting. This is something which again will be a part of your factual data and therefore it is a smart option to keep this notebook by your side as you are reading your other subjects and put in these entries while you are reading. It is not possible to make these entries on a standalone basis. Now another important concept is association and relation. Now MBBS is always full of these little allegories. This looks like a tomato, this looks like an onion, this looks like a starry sky. A smart option is to put all of them together. Here I have put something related to onions. So you have onion skin appearance of kidney in malignant hypertension, you have onion skin arteritis in SLE, you have onion skin appearance of the bile duct in primary scler sclerosing cholangitis, so on and so forth. The advantage of this is that you would not confuse these conditions when they are all together. So you know that all of these are divided by their etiology and united by being onions. And this is possible to make for many of these appearances because a lot of these appearances are common across medical science. And of course, most famous is one-liners, most common this, least common that. It is also a smart option to put all these aside together and mug them up as factuals. So the take home message for this lecture was that firstly, uh, you will require different study strategies for conceptual topics and factual data. Second is that knowledge of the subject is not specifically enough. 
not only is the knowledge not enough you have to know the proper timing of when to study it and when to revise it so that you will maximize your retentivity third is that mcq based preparation is only for repeat questions and for uh, the technique of mcq solving and only select questions have to be solved and most important is that time management in the preparation phase as well as in the exam is important so this was my two cents about postgraduate entrance exam techniques please get in touch with me my contact email is in the channel information you can hit me up on facebook or instagram and you can leave comments for feedback or criticism or anything else that you feel and of course like share and subscribe put this across to all your friends and let me know how you like it thank you and have a nice day